All of these support stands can be found on Amazon, and I'll go ahead and put individual links to them in the description down below. Whether it's fixing your figures or talking about effect parts, it's all about quality of life with Steven's Toy Tips. What's going on, collectors? It's Steven here, and I hope you're doing well. Today, we have another Toy Tips video for you, and if you are a patron over my Patreon, you actually got this one a day early. Anyway, for this Toy Tips video, it's something that I've been promising for quite some time, something that a lot of you folks have been asking for, and what do we have here? Okay, we do have Ultraman and we do have Goku, but we have support stands. You kind of guessed that by the title of the video. Anyway, but yes, in today's episode of Steven's Toy Tips, we are going to be taking a look at some of the action figure stands available for you on the market to buy and see which ones might be best for you. Maybe doing a little bit of a comparison here or there, talking about price versus value, what you get how much is it worth, all of that fun stuff. Now, I want to put a disclaimer right there out front. Uh, I don't know every single stand that is there on the market, but I can definitely tell you there are some pretty popular ones, and folks don't really know which one is the best one to get. So we are going to mostly focus in here on the 6 to 8 inch scale action figure stands that are available on the market for you to get at a affordable price. For you grammar folks out there, and affordable price, all right? All right, so without further ado, intro's gone on long enough, let's get right into the video. Now, before we go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I want to put that disclaimer out there and just reinforce the fact that this will be a video about the stands you can buy separate from the figures that you will be purchasing because you need more stands, because if you get a stand that goes with a figure, obviously it's gonna be at least okay unless you get a stand with the uh, NECA dog alien. Uh, anyway, so what I'm talking about that I'm not going to be talking about anyway is uh, things like the Figma support stands, which have an extended little tip here to help with uh, some posing that you can just pop on and off in some cases, right? So stuff like that. I'm not gonna be talking about Figma support stands or comparing them or the Vulcan Log or Revel Tech support stands, which look very similar to another support stand I'm gonna be talking about today. Uh, those types of stands, I'm not gonna be mentioning really because one, you can't buy them aside from getting them bundled with a figure. And uh, two, if you, you get got them, then, you know, cool. They're, they're a little bonus to go with your figure, right? Right. Yeah, there's no value on them, so I don't know if the comparison would be all that great. So without further ado, let's get on to the first stand. First up in a deluxe blister card packaging retailing at about $10, we have NECA's dynamic figure stand, which, ooh, that's really cool. Nice digital-like Tron background. Here's the back of the package here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so it's 10 bucks. We get ultimately one stand claw, a couple of different bases. So let's go ahead and open this up and actually take a look at this and see how well practical it is. Okay, so once you get it open, you get these two bases, right? You get one for the suction cup that you can put on the wall. You get one for the flat base. And then you get the support arm, which actually has a ratchet to move it on up and to move it on down. Uh, just fiddling around with this a little bit. <sighs> yeah, so uh, the way that it works is it has not a circular uh, tip, but mm, yeah, it's fit. So that way you just can't twist and turn it around. Uh, yeah. So kind of predetermined, like a Rebel Tech joint. And then this claw is a little tight to open and close, but that's okay. The way that you go ahead and assemble it is you do have specific peg designs and shapes that you just have to push into the base like that. So we have a nice sturdy support base there, yeah. And the claw moves up and down, pretty nice. Likes to come off easily depending on where you move it, so that's something to take into consideration. As you can see there, it's coming loose. So utility-wise, Let's get Goku here, right, in a flying pose. Let's adjust the camera a little bit. So let's go ahead and just, uh, which there's a little handle here. You can just uh, wrap around Goku like that, right? Okay. Angle it differently. All right, so Goku is there. 
We can even twist it if we want. Or rather turn it. And get Goku's support there. Whoops. And we can make it look like Goku is flying in the sky. So that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and max out the height here. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you may want to remove the figure from the stand first. You're probably thinking, oh, that's dumb, something he should do. Well, guess what? Uh, there might be somebody who isn't going to think to do that, right? So there you go. That's really, really high up, okay? So we're going to go ahead and just take a still shot here so this way you can take a good look at that. All right, now how sturdy is it? Goku's staying up there pretty well. So if, uh, let's say, your cat decides to run into your uh, glass cabinet and shake things, he's going to stand. He's going to be up there. All right, now there's one other base that we got to take a quick look at. And here is the suction cup base. And uh, as you can see, it looks like it's, uh, it's doing a pretty good job. I mean, I don't quite know exactly when you're going to be using this, but uh, it is working. No real big issues. Jostling it back and forth a little bit. No real big problems there. Now, as we sort of go back here to the normal base, something to keep in mind, uh, it looks like this connection part here for the arm is very easy to slip on and off. So you do want to keep that in mind. But one customizable feature is doing that. So you do lose a little bit of height, but that's okay. Sliding it up and down. Got to put a little bit of effort into it. Now, the only thing that I don't really, really like about NECA's uh, support stand here, some may call it nitpicking, but this is just simply from experience. And this is something you're going to see is, uh, is a common trend, and I'm going to make my case with this near the end. Uh, it's all clear plastic, and it's a really tight fit. So I would imagine over time swapping parts, doing this, that, and the other, especially with a tight fit here in the base, you will get cracking, which will not be good. Again, sit tight. I'll show you that in a second. So overall, NECA's support stand, it's a little pricey, but I got to say it is pretty solid. Overall, I think if you get a couple of these, you're going to be uh, you're going to be doing pretty well for yourself. And I would imagine that these can definitely hold some very, very bulky figures. So if you got some die cast super robots, these will be great for you. Next up in our quest to find a good figure stand for you would be the Obitsu stand. So plenty of you know about Obitsu effect parts. They've done the Kamehameha looking ones. They've done explosions. They've done rocks like these glacier ones over here. Yeah, aside from just doing effect parts, they have done support stands as well, which is really cool. Uh, Price-wise, what are we looking at here? Well, they can be about seven to eight bucks for just one of these stands, or you can get a bulk pack of five of them uh, up on Amazon for 30 bucks. It breaks it down to, uh, what is that? Uh, six bucks a piece, right, right. So that's not too shabby. Um, or is it? So uh, one of the things about Obitsu stuff is it can be like a model kit. And as you can sort of see everything here, that's pretty much what this stand is. Uh, so you have all of the different supplies in here that you're going to need. The runners, it recommends using clippers and a screwdriver. You will need the screwdriver. You're not going to be able to get away with a knife um, like some folks do. I mean, utility, like, you know, you're a scout or something, you know what to do. Um you're going to also need something with a very, very small head to it. So I know I've got flat head here, but I've got a screwdriver here that I use for my guitar stuff that I flip around and I use all the time. That is still even too big for it. So you're going to need a really small uh, Phillips head screwdriver to get your uh, support stand built. Something else that I will say, it, it can really be a pain to tighten up your support stand uh, to the way that it would need to be to support some of your heavier figures. Um, it took me quite a few turns and a little bit of frustration uh, before I was able to get this to work. Something else, it's kind of subjective. You can sort of see the air bubbles in the arms. Eh. Also, really, really flimsy. Or they feel that way. Oh, 
Oh, maybe they're not. Anyway, yeah. So that's just kind of on the subjective side. I had a couple of issues, tediousness in building this. I think material's a little weak, but what's really cool about this is you get a whole bunch of different parts, so this way you can extend it and make it super long. Um, you get other different clamps on there. Where is everything at? Um, yeah, as you can see here, you get different sized claws. Also, if you don't want something that has an articulated arm to it, what you can pretty much just do is you can pop that off if you want. You can put this little peg on there, right? It snaps in just fine. Take the claw off and pop it in like that. So this way you can have your action figure or your Obitsu doll or whatever just kind of stand there. So that's not perfect um, for a quick rushed display. Uh, but you, you kind of get the idea that I'm going for there, right? Right. So you can do that. That's pretty cool. Uh, so with that in mind, you know, seven bucks for one of them on their own. Let's just assume you're going to go for that. Is it worth it? You get a whole bunch of different customizable options with this. You get a nice base. Well, how does it how does it work? Well, I tightened the screws down as best as I could to help support the weight of a uh, decent sized figure. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to use our buddy Goku again. Hey, buddy. So Claw just wraps around his waist there. Okay. We're going nice and easy. And let's move him back a little bit. All right, so you can see he's, he's taking flight, right? That's pretty good. He gets in pretty good height. Rocking him back and forth. So he bobbles a little bit, which is actually kind of surprising that... Uh, the stand doesn't tip over because of the small base, but uh, he's good. Starts to droop a little bit. You can probably tighten the screws to make it not as much, but uh, yep, there you go. Okay, so it finally dropped over and Goku fell. So yeah, I mean, it took a little bit of effort there. I was intentionally trying to see uh, how much it would take before Goku would drop. But yeah, to be honest with you, this is really cool. Uh, something that I didn't quite go over on this one yet is the range. So just look at that. This has plenty of range if you're looking to get it into a specific uh, degree for support. So if you're looking for something that's going to have a lot of utility, that's going to have a lot of length to it, I mean, this is this is pretty, uh, pretty long, pretty tall. So length's about six inches five and a half yeah that's pretty good but the one thing i would really really have to hold against these stands would be longevity and uh with the next stands i think you might actually see why okie dokie it's time for the one that pretty much everyone has been waiting for they knew that i would get to tamashi nations tamashi stage act four stands Yep, here's the box. Chances are, if you have purchased a Tamashi Nations figure, Bandai Spirits figure, that uh, has an effect part, you have gotten the base and support arms. If you have gotten a figure with a support stand, d does that look familiar? Yeah, because that is exactly what's going on here. Now, they do a great job of breaking everything down for what you get in the box right here. We get three support bases, we get three support arms, we get three uh, just basic support pulls, we get three claws, we get three smaller claws, and we get three clips to basically hold the figure in place, kind of like I showed you earlier with the Obitsu uh, stand. So here is what uh, the packaging looks like. Price-wise, it depends on when the latest reissue for one of these sets was. Uh, MSRP is about 15 bucks. We get three stands, so that's five bucks a piece. That does beat out the Obitsu stands if you're gonna buy them in bulk. Not by much, though, uh, and they are uh, indeed supplied by Bluefin, so that's even better. They're available domestic in the U.S., and they're a really small box, so if you're looking to import them, you can easily throw these at about 1,000 yen into your monthly order, no problem. Something else is they're older now. I don't remember the last time they reissued them, but they did make them with the support bases in a whole bunch of different colors. I know they did blue and green. I'm pretty sure on that. I'm not sure what else they did. I think they did yellow and red. I might be wrong on that, but yeah, there are color options available for these as well. Gonna cost you a bit more though, but you know, 
that's just uh, aesthetics. So let's go ahead and uh, crack this open real quick. Take a look. They give you instructions in case you don't know what you're doing. And here is how the tray is all laid out. So let's go ahead and look at everything sort of individually. All right, and now that we're here, you can see how everything is set up for the stage act four from Tamashi Nations. So like I was saying, we get the smaller claw here, right? This one just kind of clamps together. Again, it is small. You can use this to hold things like maybe certain beam effects, right? Which is pretty cool. And then we get the large traditional claw, okay? So this will be able to hold your figures. It just pops in, easy to build, pretty self-explanatory. You get the claws on a runner, and you just pop them into one of these parts here. You're good to go. Now we also do get a pole, right? And then we get a little clip that goes onto the pole. You just take some of these uh, claw parts, and you put them in, and uh, they'll support your figure when you go to uh, have it stand there, right? And uh, like you notice with the Obitsu ones, it was pretty difficult to have it slide up and down, but here, just at the, uh, the blink of an eye, I can adjust the height, which may not be good for some folks. They may think that it's real easy to move, which it, it kind of can be, and uh, maybe a little bit loose, but you know what? That's okay. Now, one of the cool things about this for the Tamashi Stage Act 4 stuff is, uh, you'll notice that I'm using the hole in the back here. Well, what's cool is you just pop these little doodads out, throw them to the side, because literally nobody needs them, and you make more holes in the support base. And then you just go ahead and you, you mess it up a little bit, but then you just take more of the support arms that you get, and now, look at that. You can have uh, you can have Goku over here, right? You got Goku, and then you take Ultraman, right? Let's repose Ultraman real quick. Maybe we can uh, do this. Have him angled a little bit. And bada bing, bada boom. Look at that. On the same exact support stand. Move that out of the way. You got uh, Goku fighting Ultraman. How cool is that? Right? Okay. Now that's pretty much it for the uh, Tamashi Stage Act 4. Real, real easy. At about 15 bucks for a set of three. You got plenty of display options. Really, really cool. Now word of advice how to make these a bit better you'll notice they have the same overall construction as the obitsu stands there appears to be a phillips head screw you notice that it's a little loose sometimes right out of the box these can be loose and uh just as a point of reference let's just take uh rafael here yeah, the actual support arms themselves, they're about five inches tall. Um, you can actually tighten these up first and foremost. Second, you can customize them, and you can just make them as long as you would like. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of these. With that being said, having a lot of these, there's a reason why I have a lot of them. Let's, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, let's zoom in here. Real, real quick. Let's see. Right there where my thumbnail is at. It's cracked. Yeah, that is a common theme with uh, Tamashi Stage Act 4 support arms. The claws, specifically. There's an issue with the arms, too. Uh, yeah, they just like to crack. And then once they do crack, here's a comparison for you. The left one is cracked. The right one is not. Right one, it has friction. It's going to be able to hold. Left one, not really. So do keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that if you're tightening things down, as you move them, you want to make sure you're isolating it and you're taking any of the parts off that you have attached here 
and slowly moving them. Because if you just have this on here and you've tightened down the top part and that's where you're moving it, then you're going to apply pressure here. You're going to crack the claw and then that's just going to spin like a pinwheel. So, yeah. But even over time, just from use, I've had that happen to a lot of Tamashi Stage Act 4 support arms and claws and uh, haven't had it happen to any Obitsu stuff yet. And uh, that was the only NECA support stand I've had. So, um, yeah. I guess we're done with Bandai. Oh, wait. We're not. Okay, so Link's pose is bad. Whatever. That's not the point. The point is, is that the Stage Act 4, Tamashi Stage Act 4 support arm, is kind of a universal support arm, which a lot of the other support arms and even the bases are based off of. Uh, I'm using all Tamashi Nation stuff here. This is the Figma Dark Magician Girls effect part. That was a Good Smile Online exclusive. And this is the Figma Link. And as you can see, those holes in their backs, yeah, those are meant for Figma support stands. I am using a Act 4 support arm for that. For my Vulcan Log Blue Eyes alternatives, I actually sometimes have to use these if, um, you know, maybe one of their stands broke or I misplaced it. Yeah, so generally speaking, if you really need support stands and you are uh, kind of in a tough spot, don't be afraid to use Tamashi Stage Act 4s. They're really good. Oh, and uh, one other thing. They can actually be linked together if you get the proper packaged Tamashi Stage Act 4 support bases. They come with little links. All right, that, that, that's it for the 4s. For the because now we're going to go ahead and talk about the fives. That's right. Bandai's got plenty of Tamashi uh, stage stuff. They've got Act 3s that um, were packaged on their own. I believe they're also with the Sailor Moon figure arts with uh, some of the Saint Seiya stuff. They have a whole effect set that comes with claws as well. Those are really good, except for all of mine broke. They were just not that great. Anyway... This is the other one that's mainly going to be on the market and that I recommend at least checking out. This is the Tamashi Stage Act 5 for mechanics. It doesn't have to be for mechanics. It could be for whatever you want it to be. Ooh, as you can see, there are some differences between the 4 and the 5, but uh, we're going to take a closer look at this. Uh, just as a reference point, you can get a set of this, which comes with three bases, three support arms, three claws like you saw earlier, and uh, three smaller claws, basically all splayed out here with everything it can do for about 20 bucks. So it's a little bit more, but is it gonna be worth it? This is gonna be one of the big comparisons that folks really want to see. And again, this is carried by Bluefin, um, so you can get it very easily, like on Amazon, as I made mention, first thing in the video. So we'll go ahead and just take a quick peek at this uh, opened up so you can see how everything is laid out. And then I'll go ahead and assemble everything, and uh, we'll take a, a quick look to see how it stacks up for you folks. So here is how it is all set up. So here's what they would look like fully assembled um, if you were going to use them out of the box. There's a hole in the back where you plug the support stand into. The main arm here is on a ratchet. So that's about the degree of movement that the ratchet has. Here's the degree of movement that the first point of articulation on the stand has. So here's the smaller claw real quick. As you can see there, that's nice. And then uh, the way that it works is there is an extension pull to that as well. So it's still going to have the same degree of movement. If you go too far, though, um, as you saw there, that uh, arm, that pull will just pop off. So just just do be careful with that. You don't want to uh, have a very expensive, let's say, robot spirits there and then uh, have it fall off. We do also get the support claw, which uh, is included with the Tamashi Stage Act 4. They do come in the 5 as well. And uh, there's another joint that's added in there. Okay. So real quick, the way that it's built, um, so for this intricate assembly, you just take the pull here the extender pole, and that plugs in, and then you get this little joint here, okay, and that just plugs in to this end, and then you plug the claw in, okay, easy peasy. Now, what's really cool is that these two are interchangeable, so if you just want this bigger claw here on this arm, 
the ratcheting one, you can do that. And if you want to put that there, you can as well. Now with the ratchet here, that is designed to provide a little bit more support for heavier figures, okay? So instead of using Goku or, uh, or the like, let's go ahead. There we go. See, that will be one of the issues. Um, and use a figure with some die cast parts to it. So let's just take good old Raphael here. And see how this might work out. Okay, well. All right, so we're already seeing how this is going to go. Unfortunately, with that extended claw. Yeah, it's not working out too well. How about with just this? Could this potentially work out? All right, so the small clip is not working too well. Yeah, so it's kind of falling apart here. This is one of the issues with the Stage Act 5s. So, okay. So he's not in a super difficult pose. He's in a pretty much just a T pose there. But uh, as you can see, that ratchet does provide a little bit of extra support and it can hold heavier figures. So if you're looking for something that's going to do a little bit of a, a little bit more heavy lifting, let's say you need to hold up a Monster Arts Kiyu or you need to hold up, let's say, a Super Robot, then uh, a Tamashi Stage Act 5 may be the way to go. So just as a point of reference, let's get, uh, you know, keep Raphael here. Again, he's somewhere around the, uh, the five and a half inch mark. And that is about uh, how high uh, the two support arms can go. You saw the range of movement. What's also really cool, just like the uh, Tamashi Stage Act 4, we also have these little holes here. Once you pop out these protector, plug them up thingamajigs, which an easy way to get those out is to just do that. And then you also have connection points. So if you wanted to hook a couple of these up together and form a nice big display, you can do that. Again, these are going to run about 20 bucks for a set of three of them. So your mileage may vary if this is something you are looking for. Personally, I would say get these ditch uh, that part um, and get these if you're looking to support some very, very heavy figures. That ratchet will help you. Now, all of that being said, here is a quick look again at all the four figure stand types we took a look at in this video. We have the Obitsu figure stand, we have the Naka display stand, we have the Tamashi Stage Act 4, and the Act 5. And I really, really do hope this video was helpful for you because to be honest, you're going to need the right support stand for what you are going to be doing. Do you need something that's going to be a total tank and stand up to everything that you're probably gonna do? chances are the NECA stand is going to be for you. Do you need something that's going to be quick and easy and get the job done? Act 4 might be the best for you. Do you need something that's going to have a little bit of customizability, lots of range of movement, and uh, some length? Chances are it's going to be the Obitsu stand. Or maybe you just need a solid stand so this way you have some ratchet movement to take care of your super robots. Act 5 might do it for you. Each stand has its own pros and cons. NECA is really expensive and kind of bulky, expensive at cost per unit. The Act 4s are a little fragile. Act 5s, they can be flimsy. And as I move my arms around here, you can see Goku sort of dangling and bobbing there. So you get the idea of what might go wrong with the Obitsu stands. Something else I really want to stress here, and I mostly mentioned it during the Act 4 section, make sure you're taking care of your stands and you're moving them appropriately with care. You're not just moving the claw whenever you are adjusting the support arm. You are actually taking the claw off and maybe moving the peg. And make sure that you're not over-tightening anything that can be tightened on the Obitsu or the Tamashi stuff. So just be careful and uh, treat them correctly. But at the end of the day, I think all of them are worth picking up depending on what you have in your collection. So again, to sort of break it down, 20 bucks for a set of three, 15 bucks for a set of three, 10 bucks for one, seven bucks for one, or in bulk, you can get five of them for 30. All right. Well, that about wraps up this video. I hope you all enjoyed. And again, remember, these are not all of the stands that are available for purchase on their own. There are things like doll stands, even from Obitsu. There are stands with, that have the circular bases that have the peg to them that fit into the feet of NECA figures and Marvel Legends. That's not needed to be covered in this video. 
these are a different sort of stands. But uh, anyway, I hope you found it helpful. And if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this way you know when the next Toy Tips video is coming and you catch a few of my reviews. Thank you again so, so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video.